He's also the first champion from Howard County and the state of Maryland. Today, his sponsor, the Howard County Library System, celebrated his big win. I'm just really excited to be here. Um, I'm honored to be a part of this celebration. And um, I w it was just a real surreal, really surreal experience winning the Spelling Bee and getting to do all this fun stuff after it. So Keith won the HCLS Spelling Bee in 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019. He's the first student to win the bee four consecutive years in a row. Sundar says his next challenge is moving on to high school. I think he can handle that. All right, 17 schools are being recognized for their participation in a litter challenge. Today, the Team BCPS Clean Green 15 Litter Challenge winners were announced. The initiative encouraged Baltimore County Public Schools and community organizations to hold litter cleanups. Chesapeake Terrace Elementary School is one of the winners. This is the second year in a row the school has won. So we put our own spin on it with having um, the clean green chassis machine. We really try to teach and empower our children um, to know that they, they can do. They can do whatever they set their minds to. And cleaning the environment is really so important. So we're glad that, um, that we can help champion those efforts right here at Chesapeake Terrace. The top performing schools will share $18,000 in environmental literacy grants to create environmental projects on their school properties. Other winning schools will receive technology prizes. All right, we've told you about this before. Threatening calls from someone claiming to be with the sheriff's office. But that's not who it is. And you need to hear this story so you don't fall for this scam. Plus, changing a diaper is tough enough, but it is worse without a changing table. What a company is doing to help dads out. You're watching WMER2 News, the station that's working for you. Ford is recalling more than a million explorers. The company says the SUVs from 2011 through 2017 may have some suspension problems. One customer reported hitting a curb due to the issue. Right now, there are no related injuries. Ford will spend $180 million to fix the problem at no cost to customers. A chemical found in weed killers is in many cereals, including Cheerios. The Environmental Working Group found that all 21 of the products they tested had levels of glyphosate. That is the main ingredient in Roundup. Manufacturers insist their food is safe and none of the levels found exceeded the EPA's legal limit. We should also note that while the study's authors maintain they're an independent group, they do get support from the organic industry. A warning tonight about a scheme that features threatening calls, debt collection calls. WMER 2 News consumer reporter John Matteris shows us what to do if this happens to you so you don't waste your money. A busy mom almost had her world turned upside down a few weeks ago when she got a call from her local sheriff's department claiming she was about to be sued and possibly arrested. Well, now she wants to warn all of us about what turned out to be a disturbing scam. Jessica picked up her phone the other day to a frightening voicemail message. Hello. So I'm a private courier officer for Hamilton County Compliance Department. The so-called officer said Jessica was being sued over a bad debt. I'm a defendant in a civil case being sued um, and that she that they're going to send out papers, legal documents. No later than 9 a.m. Wednesday morning or we will be out to serve you as scheduled. Jessica was so shaken she didn't want her last name on TV. Who am I being sued by or for what? The caller told her to pay the debt or sheriff's deputies would come by. They even called her mom. Like my mom, she thought it was real. She was started freaking out for me. Think about this. Even if these calls were legitimate, the sheriff's department doesn't have time to drive out to your house over some $20 debt from years ago. These are just threats to scare you. We checked the number that called and found no company connected to it, only complaints about similar threatening calls. These are known as zombie debt collectors who try to scare people into paying old debts that usually are not theirs. The FTC's Fair Debt Collection Practices Act states a debt collector must tell you the name of the original creditor. They must also tell you you have the right to dispute the debt. But Jessica can see how easy it is to panic and send money. It's frightening just to know like you're being sued or they're gonna you're gonna be served legal documents like 
Oh, yeah. Bottom line, the sheriff will not visit you or arrest you over an old debt. Don't agree to pay anything over the phone so you don't waste your money. I'm John Marys, WMAR, 2 News. Well, next week, you can get around Hartford County for free. Hartford Transit Link Bus System will be giving free rides next Thursday through June 20th. It is to celebrate National Dump the Pump Day, as well as to promote public transportation usage. For more information about the service, visit the Hartford County section at WMER2news.com. You know, any dad knows it's hard to get a baby changed, but uh, even especially when mom's not there to help you out. That's why singer John Legend and the father of Who's Squat for Change, diaper changing pick went viral. They teamed up with Pampers. The company wants to install 5,000 changing tables in men's rooms across the U.S. and Canada by 2021. Pampers will do this in a so-called high-need locations first. So that includes parks and libraries in cities like Cincinnati, Dallas, and Detroit. And don't forget about Baltimore on that list because we got plenty of high-changing places too. Yeah, and some good stuff there. Of course, I definitely need those. They're not seeing them too much uh, when you no, walk. You're in not, the, not that much anymore. Yeah, and uh, when you walk in the bathroom and uh. Father's Day coming up here right around the corner. Looks pretty good now this for Dad. It's a good weather zone. Yeah. Rain moving out. Uh, rain moving out. It's going to get hot, though, as we get towards the end of the weekend. So let's enjoy what we got outside right it's now good. because summer is nine days away. June 21st, 2019 at 1154 a.m. And we're going to get a taste of it here as we get towards the weekend. Nine days and counting. Right now, it really does not feel like summer. It actually feels like spring. 77, mostly cloudy to partly cloudy skies. Milky sunshine is what we're seeing out. Outside. Southerly breeze here at 10 miles per hour in the dew point at 52 degrees still on a comfortable side of things compared to what we've dealt with the past couple of days prior to this. It's up a little bit, but still pretty comfortable. Temperatures right now in the lower 70s off to the north, mid 70s as you get down through Lutherville, Randallstown, Ellicott City, over to portions of Columbia. Popular number on the board, sunny and 75. Pair of sevens of both Annapolis as well as Baltimore, 75 also in Patuxent River, 69 cool degrees there in Ocean City. Muggy meter, it's still out of order, but eventually it comes back into play here as we get towards tomorrow afternoon. We'll add a little moisture into the mix out ahead of a cold frontal boundary. It will be brief. That cold front will wipe the humidity away and then we get another good looking day by Friday. Winds are also out there right now gusting upwards of 20 miles per hour in spots, especially over the mountains. Otherwise, those winds will start to subside a little bit here overnight tonight as the moisture pushes in from the south. Right now, that rain is down just south of Charlottesville coming through the south side of Virginia into the mountains of North Carolina. Should arrive sometime after about 9, 10 o'clock tonight. This is the first wave. It's an area of low pressure that's going to jog up the coast. We'll follow that up with a cold frontal boundary that's back towards portions of Illinois, Chicago land right now that will move through as we get towards your Friday. Some of the storms, though, that we see tomorrow afternoon could be on the strong side of things. That's if the atmosphere reloads. Could see a little wind and hail, mainly predominantly over the mountains of Maryland. So future cast as we run the timer here for you, you'll notice a couple of showers moving in after about nine o'clock tonight. Very scattered in nature. Rain will pick up in intensity though early tomorrow morning as we head off to work and school. Could see some heavy patches of rain at times, but this will get out of here once we get through the late morning rush. There'll be a little bit of a break and then the atmosphere will reload. And there's your showers and thunderstorms that will start to fire about four or five o'clock for the evening rush home. That front will kick out of here. Leftover shower about eight, nine o'clock. After that, things quiet down and we're good to go as we get towards your Friday and Saturday. Overnight lows back down in the upper 50s. Highs only in the 70s by Friday afternoon. Rainfall potential here upwards of an inch, maybe two inches at best in localized pockets. Not looking at any flooding concerns because it's been dry as of late. So we actually do need the rain. 58 in Parkton, 62 at the Inner Harbor, 66 in Annapolis. Increasing clouds, rain after 9 o'clock. Morning rain tomorrow, some sun, breezy conditions in the afternoon. And then the storms build in as we get towards the evening ride home. Some of those storms could be strong to severe. Temperatures in the 70s statewide. Then by Friday, it's absolutely gorgeous at the beach. Don't go tomorrow, Friday and Saturday. Picturesque temperatures in the 70s. Long range is cool. It's also wet, and the seven-day forecast suggests that by Father's Day, <coughs> chance of a shower storm with temps near 90. Better chances by Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. Well, thanks to a donation, patients at Johns Hopkins Children's Center will be able to stay warm during their treatment. Today, CapeIvy.com donated poncho capes to the hospital's child life specialists. 
Meg Smith initially designed them for her son, Gavin, who spent years in and out of the hospital. And she knows how difficult it can be for patients to stay warm while getting hooked up to IV and pick lines. You can't wear robes or long-sleeved um, shirts when you have IVs, pick lines, things like that in the hospital or out um, when you get sent home with any sort of um, equipment, metal, medical equipment. And so these just pop right over your head and keep you warm um, when you're in the hospital. Nice and colorful, too. CapeIvy.com was created in honor of Smith's son. She hopes to give away as many capes as possible to frequent flyer children in the hospitals. You know, anywhere and everywhere you look these days, you find plastic. It's hurting the environment, and you can do something about it. Later, from the baseball mound to behind the counter, who traded their gear for an apron and donuts this morning? That's ahead on WMER 2 News at 5. It comes with your morning coffee, most takeout meals, and is uh, even one of the very first things you touch when you wake up in the morning. Plastic is intertwined in just about every aspect of our lives. So getting rid of it can be tough. But as WMER 2 News' Megan Knight shows us tonight, small steps can help get you on your way. 60 million plastic water bottles, 200 million plastic bags, and 500 million plastic straws are thrown away every day in the U.S. I was pretty shocked and uh, dismayed that I had kind of been sucked into that whole, um, you know, false sense of security with using plastics. But you can cut out plastic starting with your morning latte. If you bring in your own coffee mug to places like Seattle's Best, Pete's Coffee and Starbucks, you won't only cut your plastic use, but you can get a discount too. Other ways you can reduce your plastic use include using metal clothes hangers instead of plastic ones, bring your own container when getting takeout or getting a doggy bag from a restaurant, and use glassware instead of plastic for leftovers, not only for the environmental concerns, but also for health concerns. They're considered to be fat-loving or lipophilic molecules, so they kind of naturally migrate into the fat in the food. San Francisco just became the first city to ban the sale of plastic bottles and cities like Washington DC, Portland, Maine and New York City have added a five cent tax for getting a plastic grocery bag. WMAR 2 News is a proud partner of GBMC Healthcare. You're watching the station that's working for you. Now, WMAR 2 News at 5. The passionate plea from comedian John Stewart yesterday for struggling 9-11 first responders may have hit home with congressional leaders. We're going to tell you what Congress did today. And the college cheating scandal is coming full circle. Today, the first sentence was handed down. Why the sailing coach who profited from the bribes may be the only defendant to avoid jail time. Thank you for joining us at 530. Grab that umbrella, put it by the front door. I'm Kelly Swoop with meteorologist Eric Taylor, so we might be needing that umbrella, huh? Yeah, but right now we can drop the mic on the forecast okay. because uh, it's pretty good out there. It's okay. mostly sunny, partly cloudy skies, but the clouds, of course, are going to start to come in from the south, and then mm -hmm. the rain's going to follow here during the overnight hours. So we will need the umbrellas late overnight tonight, and especially as we get towards early Thursday morning. Temperatures outside right now, you cannot complain. They're in the 70s in most locations, but the rain, it's not too far off. It's south of Charlottesville right now, pushing up into Roanoke and eventually now down towards Norfolk and through the Outer Banks, and that rain will start to fill in on radar here as we go through the overnight hours. It's an area of low pressure. It's going to jog up the coast. That's the first wave, and then you see that front that's back towards the west down through St. Louis and Chicago. That's our next weather maker that will pull on through as we get towards Thursday afternoon. Tonight's forecast, upper 50s, lower 60s again. A little tad bit of humidity out there, but not too bad. Increasing clouds. The rain develops after 9 o'clock down to the south. We start out with rain tomorrow a little bit of a lull and then another round of rain by the time we hit your Thursday afternoon. We'll talk about the timing of that as well as the weekend preview. It is Father's Day after all. We'll have the forecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right. Thanks a lot, Eric. The day after comedian John Stewart gave that emotional testimony from a Capitol Hill committee, lawmakers vote to advance a measure that would renew funding to help September 11th first responders. Karen Kafa has details from Washington on what happens next.
No opposition as a House panel advanced a bill that would extend funding to help 9-11 first responders and survivors for 70 years until 2090. All responders and survivors, whether they got sick in 2015 or will get sick in 2025 or 2035, should be properly compensated. Congress must act to make that happen. The September 11th Victim Compensation Fund was last renewed in 2015 and is set to expire in December 2020. On Tuesday, former late-night host John Stewart called for the funding to be extended when he testified before a House Judiciary Subcommittee with 9-11 first responders. Sick and dying. They brought themselves down here to speak. The first responders echoing Stewart's urgency for Congress to act to help those who have suffered from lung ailments, cancer, and other health problems after working at Ground Zero in the aftermath of the attacks. We're fighting for those who can't be here to voice their own help and their cause because they are too sick and they are dying. The bill advanced by the panel Wednesday was introduced in February, not long after the fund's administrator announced there wasn't enough money to pay all claims, which have increased sharply in the last two years. The bill now moves to the House floor and would also need passage by the Senate. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. A big day in the college admissions cheating scandal. The first defendant was sentenced. Former Stanford head sailing coach John Vandemore pleaded guilty in March to accepting hundreds of thousands of dollars in bribes. And today he was sentenced. ABC's Maggie Ruley has the latest. The first sentencing in the Varsity Blues college admission scandal has been handed down. A judge ruling that John Vandemore is the least culpable in this scandal and will not serve jail time. The former head sailing coach at Stanford University instead sentenced to six months home detention and a $10,000 fine. Vandemore appearing in a Boston courthouse after already pleading guilty to accepting bribes from college applicants in exchange for labeling them as legitimate recruits. This year, um... Mid-September, I'm going to Stanford. According to court documents, Vandemore created a fake sailing profile for Chinese student UC Zhao after receiving $500,000 from the scheme's alleged mastermind, Rick Singer. Her family allegedly paying $6.5 million to get her admitted, the largest payment known in the case. Her parents have never been charged, and Zhao no longer attends the university. Prosecutors argued that Vandemore should spend more than a year behind bars, but the defense was seeking probation. Of all the people involved in this, he is probably the least culpable. He's not one of the parents who made one of the deals. Yes, he did something wrong. Yes, he did something criminal. But no, in my view, he should not be serving 13 months in prison. His sentence could set the tone for other defendants still awaiting their fate. Uh, excuse us, folks. Like actress Felicity Huffman and Full House star Lori Laughlin. In a letter to the court, Stanford writes that their reputation has been damaged, and they say that the funds Vandemore received for the school sailing team are tainted, and they plan to donate it to charity. Maggie Ruley, ABC News, New York. After a Chirps football player died from a heat stroke during practice, Maryland football coaches and players will participate in a health and wellness sports clinic held in his honor. Tomorrow, the Jordan McNair Health and Wellness Clinic will be held at McDonough High School. The two-hour clinic will cover warning signs, symptoms, and prevention. Student-athletes ages 8 to 13 are encouraged to attend, as well as parents. It runs from 5 until 7 p.m. And some Terps players will also be there to share their stories about their former teammate, McNair, who passed away two weeks after being hospitalized following a team workout last May. DJ Durkin, the head coach of the football team when McNair died, was fired. Athletic training staff involved with the football team also let go. Now the school is changing its sports medicine program, and McNair was a student at McDonough here in Baltimore County. Ravens minicamp is rolling on in in Owings Mills. Much of the focus on the offense and quarterback Lamar Jackson, learning a whole new playbook. WMR2 News' Sean Stepner spoke with the man in charge of putting it all together. All this talk of a new offense being installed for this year's Ravens. So really, what's it all about? A more efficient, behind-the-scenes, streamlined uh, uh, offense, really. Uh, quicker communication, the ability to play quicker at the line of scrimmage. So how will new offensive coordinator Greg Roman's master plan translate onto the field? You're going to see some elements of, of things you've seen in the past. You'll see some new stuff, some new stuff that looks like old stuff. And Lamar Jackson will be running that stuff. 
Roman says his second year quarterback is getting better with every repetition. Helping Roman as pass game coordinator is new receivers coach David Culley, who comes over from Buffalo and gets to now mold first round draft pick Marquise Brown. The wideout hasn't been able to fully participate in offseason work because of a foot injury. I think he's coming along very well. He's picking up what we're doing. Uh, he has a pretty good understanding of what we're doing. Another new face among the coordinators is Chris Horton, taking over the special teams from longtime John Harbaugh assistant Jerry Rosberg. The constant in the coordinating from last year to this, Don Martindale, who guided the Ravens' defense to a number one NFL ranking in 2018. So much has been made this offseason of all the veterans who left via free agency, namely Terrell Suggs, Eric Weddle, and C.J. Mosley. Martindale not giving us any coach speak when tackling that issue. Those guys are great players, and I, you know, there's, there's, I'm not going to sit up here and say next man up, the, the typical coach talk. We're going to miss them. I mean, you're going to miss a Terrell Suggs. Everybody here is. Every, everybody in, in the city of Baltimore is. There is a transition period. That transition period is currently underway without defensive tackle Michael Pierce, who was sent off the field Tuesday because he showed up to minicamp out of shape. Of course you're disappointed. Uh, you know, I think, you know, what I said to him, and I said it in front of the whole defense, life's about choices. Just don't make that choice make your life. Let's don't forget what, what, what a great football player that he is, and, and, and he'll get back there. I can't tell you when, but he'll get back to it. He'll get back to that. Minicamp wraps up on Thursday. In Owings Mills, Sean Stepner, WMAR2 News. Well, today some Dunkin' customers were served by a member of the Orioles. Pitcher Richard Blyer served coffee and donuts at the Dunkin' in McHenry Row this morning. Special appearances and celebration of the team's partnership with Dunkin'. Now through uh, August 28th. DD Perks members can get a $1 medium hot or iced coffee every Wednesday at participating Baltimore locations. It's great. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy doing this. Um, it's nice to see people, uh, you know, like a outside the field environment and, um, you know, for them to, to see us and, and put a face with the name and, and kind of see that we're regular people as well. All right. Customers got to take pictures with the Oil Bird mascot and Duncan mascot Cuppy. There were also raffles for autographed Royals prizes, the Duncan prize wheel, music, and so much more.